Hi and welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. My name is Ruben and this is my review for Apple's original series, Pachinko. I've been eagerly anticipating but kind of holding off on watching the screeners that were given to me because I knew it was going to be one of those that you kind of have to be in the mood for. And it struck me recently, I was like, yes, I'm in, I'm in the mood for something uh, a bit meaty, a bit deep in thought, maybe something that looks a bit arty but actually draws me in so the art is there as part of the story but actually the story is what grabs me and so here we go let me know your thoughts down below had you heard of this let's jump in the highly anticipated series based on the new york times best-selling acclaimed novel by author minji lee chronicalizes the hopes and dreams of four generations of a korean immigrant family epic in scope and an intimate in tone the story begins with a forbidden love and crescendos into a sweeping saga that journeys between korea japan and america to tell an unforgettable story of war peace love loss triumph and reckoning okay so to be able to do a review for this series the eight episodes that the series from the book that is based on you kind of have to break it up into segments because it is quite big in scope and you know it's one of those grand epics but very kind of personal in story. So I'm gonna break it up. So I'm gonna talk about the look, the aesthetic, the feel of it right now. And the cinematography is gonna be something that's gonna jump out to you multiple times, or if not multiple times between each episode, you're gonna go, whoa, look at that shot. And it shouldn't take you out of the story, but it will be good enough for you to go, maybe to turn to your part and go, look at that shot, what have they done there? Of note, you'll see drone shots. It's weird to talk about drones because of the time of how this is filmed, but the drone shots that you see in this are spectacularly done and the differences between that. Sometimes you get crane shots and you'll get different types of Steadicam uses in camera techniques. And the reason why I'm going so much into this is because uh, having worked in film, I noticed that the, the smoothness of the techniques, that the, what it's showcasing at the moment, there's one particular grand shot, just in like, without doing spoilers, episode one, you're seeing a vast open landscape across a lake and boats, and it comes in so smoothly. Now with crane shots, you can get that, but there is always that kind of jitter. You'll recognize it if you go back now and you're watching these sweeping landscape shots, they're pretty much wide. They're either, it would have been like helicopter or cranes, and there's always this kind of jitter, not quite smooth. Drones are having this amazing effect now where we can do shots like that. So when it comes to creativity, the look, the aesthetics of it, because we're jumping in multiple timelines, uh, because of the generations it spans, we get different looks and different lighting techniques all used very cleverly, putting you in the zone of each one following this family, which uh, is interesting because they're going along the route where they believe they're kind of cursed. Uh, and the, at the beginning, it kind of showcases why they believe that in between the culture clashes that we have of Korean and Japanese and then American later on. Um, it's very interesting with the color palettes that they're using. So the cinematographer had a lot to work with here to kind of be able to tell that story. And in amongst that cinematography, we have a very eclectic orchestral score that really does add to the atmosphere and tones of color. Sometimes you can hear sounds that will add a color to it. I don't know if that ever happens to you. And the cinematography with the kind of color tone of it really seems to lend itself to the score. Just beautifully crafted. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, this review is sounding like it's very artsy and I don't know if I'm going to be in the mood for that but that's where the story comes into play so we get the story and the acting and that in combination with each other again is where the story works best where the series works best because the look is fine and it's very grand in scope and it's because of, we have like a family but throughout multiple times and it does jump in between each time that could feel a little bit jarring but there are multiple techniques used in this series that keeps you kind of, oh, I understand what's going on. For example, we have multiple languages on screen at any one time, but there's different subtitle colors very cleverly used, like blue for um, Japanese, uh, yellow for Korean, I believe, and the Americans just English. Uh, and, and that kind of jumps in because of the culture has been mixed. And you'll understand when you get there. Sometimes, like even for me back home, because I'm originally from South Africa, there is this kind of slang language that you jump from English to Zulu to Afrikaans, depending where you live. And if you've sp spent many years speaking those languages, you kind of dip and dive, dip and dip, dive, <laughs> going into dodgeball. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and 
Dodge, dip, 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 dodge. And there's a reason for that. And there's contention in that story. There's tenseness in the storytelling that sometimes just crops up. You don't expect it. And you think something's going to happen and you're on the edge of your seat. And I don't know if it's necessarily meant to be as tense as I was experiencing when I was watching it. But I was like, damn. This is some good acting. This is some good performances. This is some good cinematography. Throughout the episodes, you just kind of go, well, what is this This I'm experiencing? This is like art. This is a reason why people like me get into reviewing content and kind of letting everybody know this is one you need to put on your list is because sometimes you get a just a, a diamond in the rough. Sometimes when I've been watching and reviewing stuff over a week and you get so much and you get so bogged down, you're like, why isn't there just one really good thing that reminds me? I know, first world problems, but it, you know, as a reviewer, you want good stuff to watch. You want something that does something a little bit different or you want something that is so good that grips you, captivates you, and this kind of ticks it all. I do, however, think this is not going to be for everybody because it is a slow burn. But I don't think you could have done this any way, like there's no other way to do this. It's a day in the life of, in the family of, over generations of. So you get to see because of the time scale, because of what has happened. Following this family is so intimate, even though those shots can be wide. Uh, you feel like you're a fly in the wall often at times watching this with them. And it comes down to the performances and the actors, and I'm not even gonna, about to try and say the names because I'll, I won't do it justice. But the family is fantastic. There's a young actress that we follow throughout uh, the episodes, and then obviously it changes, and obviously depending on who's alive at the time, uh, the flashbacks, everybody is at their A-game. You feel the emotional gut punches when you're supposed to. You know, there are moments I was just like, mm angry and then happy and then sad you go on a roller coaster ride it's five nicholas cages out of five i could stand here and talk about it dissect it just when it comes to filmmaking it's fantastic but as a story you're gonna be gripped i really want to go and read the book now so let me know your thoughts down below have you read the book and then um have you seen the episodes that are now live on apple thanks so much for watching but most of all until next time remember live long tuesday